it, Rowdy? No, not a thing, Jim. Oh, I'm sure getting anxious. Yes, we all are. Yeah, you bet. some signs pretty soon, shouldn't we? Yeah, this grass wouldn't feed a herd of goats. Yeah, it looks like the goats have already been here. Drought. Well, it won't make any difference. We'll have them in the shipping pens by nightfall. We hope. We're not there yet. Oh. We're getting real close, Mr. Wishbone. Yeah, nothing but fences. I sure couldn't live in a country like this, all fenced in. Well, I'll be glad to get that town, though. Did you excited? Well, I'm saving up. Me too. I haven't had a drop of water for two days. I want to be real good and thirsty. Get out. We can smell sedalia even if you can't. What are you planning on doing first, Rowdy? Well, I'll tell you, Teddy. After I get myself a bath, a real tub with hot water, a shave and haircut and all them trimmings, I'm gonna order myself some of the finest city clothes you ever saw. If you know anybody in Sedalia, they sure ain't gonna hardly know you. <laughs> well, that's right. Then I'm gonna get myself a real expensive Delmonico's dinner. What about liquor? I can just see all those pretty girls. Ooh, wait till I get my hand. <laughs> What is it? Oh, look at it. It's a fire, isn't it? Oh, isn't that smoke? But that's smoke from a boiler. That's a railroad. That's Sedalia. <laughs> look, Bob, we made it. Looks a long ways off to me. Yeah, but we got nothing to worry about now. Oh, no. Nothing except fences, grass, and water, and a place to hold them. And the buyers, the inspectors, the market price, freight costs, the mood of the world. In the state of a million housewives' digestion. Well, take it easy, will you? It'll be all right. I'll take it easy when I got the money in hand and this beef out of my sight. Sidalia! <laughs> no more gunshots, any of you. You want to go chasing steers all over the state of Missouri? Just calm down until you get them in the pens in Sedalia. You'll have plenty of time to celebrate then. You promise that, Mr. Favor? Now, you ain't gonna be like some of these bosses. Hold back most of a man's money so as he can't go to town and blow off steam. Well, I did sort of hope that I was bossing the grown men. You'll get your pay when the job's done. Till then, you're still working, so get them moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still sure looks good, though, don't it? I'd rather see it closer, too. You two take them on to Luna and then hold them there. I'll go ahead and contact the buyers. Let them know we're coming. Right. Favor, I'm outside with 3,000 head of prime beef. Mr. Favor. Hey, what's the matter with all you people? Since when ain't a new herd good news in Sedalia? Since two days ago when the panic started. Panic? Haven't you heard? The biggest bank in New York went under. Bottoms dropped out of everything. Nobody's doing a thing. Bank's closing up all over. No cash, no credit, no buyers for the cattle. The price is going down, huh? All the way down to zero. No buyers at all. It can't be. Somebody's got to be buying cattle. Nobody's got any money to buy. Anybody's got any cash, he's hanging on to it. What banks are still open, won't
won't lend a cent. You came all the way from Texas. I know, Mr. Faber, but you're not the only one. It's the same all up and down the line, Abilene, Dodge. It's tough luck. I'd have been in the same boat myself, only I got here two weeks ago. Well, just what am I supposed to do with this herd? I don't know. If you're lucky, maybe you can sell them for tallow, a couple of dollars a head. Tallow? This is prime beef. Seems nobody's eating prime beef these days. At least no call for it. This can't last forever. Maybe not. Sure, there's been panics before. They don't last. A few days and it all flows over. Maybe. Well, people get the confidence back. Things can't stand still. You've got to live, to eat. And they start buying again. Sure. But when? Oh, we'll just wait it out. A few days, we get the most. People calm down. Buyers will show up. Yeah, we'll just uh, hold the herd outside of town for a while. Wait it out. Won't do any harm to try, I guess. You'll need grass, Mr. Favor. That'll be hard to find. That's right. Range around here is scarce. It's all burned up. I tried to fatten my herd up a little before selling them. Had to go clear over to Baxter Springs before I could find enough. And there ain't nothing at all closer than that. Well, there, there is the Cardwell place. It's about the only good grass near Sedalia. Yeah, but that's not open range. It's down in the valley. It's fenced. We'll pay for grazing fees for a few days. Can't be much. Where is this Cardwell? Well, it's his widow, Emma Cardwell, you'll have to talk to. The road west, you'll know it by the grass. Thanks. Finished already, Garcia? Mrs. Cardwell? Oh. oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Who are you? My name's Favor. Favor? You're not from around here. No, ma'am. I just come up from Texas. That's what I thought. And you're a drover, too, from the smell of you. Oh, I uh, just brought a herd up the trail. I need to graze them, and I'd like to hire pasturage from you. We won't cause you any trouble. We'll camp down by the creek. I wouldn't even bother you in the first place. Normally, we'd just throw them in the pen and forget about them. But uh, there's panic on. There's no buyers, and I'll have to wait for a few days. You're asking me to do you a kindness. I'm, I'm offering you a business proposition. You've got grass. I need it. I'm willing to pay for it. How much? Well, any reasonable price. I'll leave that up to you, ma'am. You said a few days. How long would you want to stay, mister? Well, I couldn't say exactly, but uh, I'd say a week at the outside. How many head of cattle do you have? I'm roughly 3,000, maybe a few more. And the price will be 25 cents per head per week. Per week? But that's way too much, ma'am. Then find your grass someplace else, Mr. Favor. But there isn't any place else. Unless because of the panic here just taking advantage of me. I didn't ask you to come here. You wanted my terms, I gave them to you. Now take it or leave it. All right, I'll take it for a week. We'll put it on paper. You write. As of this date, I promise to pay Emma Cardwell, a grazing fee of 25 cents per week for each of 3,000 head of cattle, payable before said cattle leave the premises.
Date it and sign it. Garcia will give you a hand. This is Cardwell. You drive a hard bargain with your sharp sense of business. Something uh, puzzles me. What? Well, that grass hasn't been grazed in quite a while. How come you let it go to waste? Why don't you use it to raise your own stock? I don't think that's any of your business. Yeah, I think I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at Scarlett getting all sharped up. I don't aim to waste no time before I belly up the bar. What are you doing there, Jim? Well, I'm figuring out how much I got coming. I think I got enough to go back east, New York. Hey, maybe Philadelphia in this favor. Yeah. I'm going to see me out in this world. Yeah, well, knowing you, you won't get past the first Monty table with that dough of yours. Here comes Mr. Favor. Separate like, huh? Yeah, and carriages probably, huh? Something wrong? I'll give it to you straight. Country's in a panic. No buyers, no market, no sale. You mean we can't sell the herd? No money for us? We ain't going to town tonight, blow off some steam. That's it. When do we go? I don't know. We'll just have to hold the herd a while until this blows over and we can get a decent price for the feed. I found some grass and hired the ground. It's close enough to town, all right, but I got no money to give you. You promised us, Mr. Favor. And you'll get it when I get it. Nothing I can do about it. Well, it's something I can do about it. I can quit. We signed on to go to Sedalia. This is Sedalia, and we're through. You free to go any time? Only question is, do you want to go empty-handed, or do you want to wait until I can get you some money? You got a pretty good argument there. Well, anyway, we agreed to sign on with Mr. Favor till the end of the trail. That means until the herd is sold. Well, sure, we'll stay, Mr. Favor. How long do you figure it'll be, Mr. Favor? I just don't know. I hope no more than a week, but I can't promise anything. Well, let's hit him out. Follow me in. Always something, is it? I was sort of hoping that this time it might be different. Always something. Mr. Favor, not much change in two days. None I could see. Well, anyway, you got grass. Surprise me. You're the first old Emma would ever lease to. No doubt that. She drives a hard bargain. She got something against cattlemen? I don't know. Her husband was one of them that started the business here. He made Sedalia a shipping point. He helped to get the pens built. And then he sort of lost out. I guess he got the blues. Killed himself. He must have left her well off enough. She hadn't done anything with the land. Until now. Is she charging you steep? More than enough. I can't stay there long. Maybe you ought to think about wintering those cattle. Take them out on the range, west or north. Sell them in the spring, all fattened up. Prices ought to be back by then. Oh, I got a lot of owners back in Texas waiting for their money. I got notes coming due in October. It's the same around here. They figured they'd have the money back by then. Say, uh, how much you think you got to get out of that herd? Mm, at least $25 a head. Maybe you better think about wintering. They don't get their money. I don't know what they're going to do. A lot of places going to be foreclosed this winter. Well, I'll see you. Then what are we going to do? I don't know. Doesn't seem like anything we can do. Well, what about driving them to another town, Abilene or Ellsworth? And maybe east to St. Louis. It's the same all over. The prices drop right down to the floor. Looks pretty old blues to me. That don't sound like you. 
This ain't weather or cattle or horse or something you can get your hands into. Do something about it. Banking money. I don't know. It's beyond me. People just get over this darn panic. Well, just one buyer would show up. That's all it'd take. Wishbone? What are you up to? Never mind. Mr. Favor tell you you'd go in the tent? I don't need his say so nor yours. Now just keep your mouth shut. You run out on us? Well, what if I am? I came to Sedalia. That's all I bargained for. Listen, you know Mr. Favor depends on you more than does anybody else. Now who he depends on is his affair. And where I go and when is mine. Now you wait a minute, Mr. Favor. Pete, don't you come one step nearer? I'm not gonna let you go until you go over and talk it over with Mr. Favor. Oh, I guess you're right. Pete, you know how specially fond of you I am. Well, so you'll know how much I hate to do this. Do what? believe it. Wishbone hitting you over the head and deserting? It's right when we need every man the most? This lump on my head didn't grow from a seed. There ought to be some kind of mistake. There ain't no mistake. He just flew the coop. And without his money. So somebody else will do the cooking. You'll live without him. Yeah, but it won't be the same. Of all of us, Wishbone. It's not true, Mr. Rowdy. He wouldn't do it, I know. I'll just forget it, will you, Mushy? Well, I can't forget it, Mr. Nolan. Joe, sure, wonder where he is. What he's doing. <laughs> do. My name's Smith. I see by the tag on your luggage you're going to Sedalia. Oh, yes, yes, I am. So am I. It's a coincidence, isn't it? I uh, haven't seen you on the train before, have I? Well, no, I just got on the last station. Had to stop off before Sedalia on a little business. I didn't get your name. Oh, Draper. I do, Mr. Draper. Uh, what business would you be in? I work for the government. I kind of thought maybe you'd be in the cattle business. Oh, is that your line? Yes, it is. A cattle buyer, that's what I am. Representing one of the biggest interests back east. That's so. Come out to check the stock in Sedalia. You planning to buy? Well, I don't just check them for my health, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this panic hasn't affected your business then. A panic? What panic? What? Pure and utter nonsense. People got to eat, don't they? That's what I always say. People got to eat, and that means beef, panic or no panic. Yeah, of course, I might get a little better price that way. <laughs> no, I mean to pay every cent that cattle's worth. I see. Uh, you got any friends in Sedalia that are in beef? You might uh, put them on to me. J.W. Smith. Probably be staying at the drover house. Well, I'd be glad to. Well, I guess we have time to have a cigar before we get to town, hmm? Well, thank you very much. Don't mind if I do. Uh -huh. Light here someplace. <clears throat> Don't say, Mr. Smith. Oh, yes, indeed. People got to eat, don't they? That's what I always say. So if you can find me a good herd of two, three thousand, I'll go thirty-five dollars ahead and glad to. Uh, who'd you say your interests were back east, Mr. Smith? Uh, Nolan and Yates. Uh, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, all over. You heard of them, of course. Oh, of course. Well, now, Mr. Smith, there's a shortage of real good beef right now, but it just might be that we'll be able to get our hands on some. So why don't you just sit tight and... Let us see what we can do. Well, fine, gentlemen. Uh, you'll be able to reach me at the Drover house. Uh, if 
it don't take too long, that is, because I might be able to find what I want in Abilene or beyond. Oh, no, no, it won't take long. Uh, we'll contact you this afternoon, no later. Now, you just sit tight. Fine, gentlemen, thank you. Oh, it's a cash deal, you know. Say, why didn't you tell him about the favor herd? Don't be a fool. He's willing to pay $35 a head. Faber's willing to take 25 maybe even less by now. Is there any reason why we shouldn't make a profit of $10? After all, it's perfectly legitimate. We brought the two parties together. That ought to be worth something. Oh, but he wants cash. We're going to have to raise some cash. Yeah, but where? Well, I've got a little in the bank. You have, too, no doubt. And then there's uh, Burke and Wilson. And you'll think of some others. Oh, come on. We haven't got all day. Say, where'd this Smith come from, anyway? By Nolan and Yates, of course. You heard him. Now get going. I beg your pardon. I'm looking for the secretary. Well, that's me. My name is Walters. Mine's Draper. I represent the government. I'm looking for beef. A buyer for the government? That's right. I've been advised there's a herd of 3,000 head due to hit Sedalia right about now. Well, you must mean the Gill Favor Drive. Well, so they've arrived. Well, take me to the poor stranded trail boss. Well, what makes you think he's poor and stranded? You know the answer to that as well as I do, Mr. Walters. Panic, banks closing, lack of buyers. Wrong again, Mr. Draper. Business may not be humming as usual, but Sedalia's not out of buyers yet. You mean Mr. Favor's been approached by another buyer? That's probably a speculator trying to take advantage of the panic. Well, where is Mr. Favor's camp? I'm prepared to make him a fair bid. Are you prepared to bid against an offer of $35 a head cash? I'm afraid not. I didn't think so. I'm afraid you're out of luck, Mr. Draper. Did you say Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith, of Nolan and Yates. Uh, want 25. Uh, 20 is as high as we can go. And take my advice, Mr. Favor, it's the only offer you're likely to get. Now, here's $1,000 just to bind the deal. The rest tomorrow when we take possession. All right. Fine, good. You won't regret this, Mr. Favor. You'll be the only trail boss that comes out so well. See you in the morning. I guess that's all that's left to do. Take much of a profit for the owners, but at least it's a profit and the men will get paid. Will you look who's here? Mr. Wishbone, I knew you'd be back. You didn't know nothing of the kind. I thought I saw him tie up with the hitch rack, but I didn't think I could believe my eyes. Oh, it's him, all right. The little rat that thought the ship was going to sink. Well, oh, Pete Nolan, you got no call calling me names like that. You're just a sore head. You split my scalp, and then you got the nerve to call me a sore head. Ah, oh, Pete, you're making a mountain out of a little old lump. Well, I hit you on the hardest part of your head and put a nice, soothing compress on it to ease the misery. Uh, hi, Mr. Favor. Everybody? You forgot something, maybe? I thought as long as I'd come this far, I'd stop in and make your last supper. Last supper? How'd you know it was going to be our last supper? Or maybe you got wind of the fact that we're selling the herd? Oh, somebody buying the herd? Well, that's fine, isn't it? That's mighty fine. So where you been? What have you been up to in those clothes? Uh, up to in these clothes? Yeah, up to in those clothes. <sighs> well, Mr. Fravor. Yeah? I've got a confession to make. I should think you would. Well, I knew the fix you were in. Well, the fix we were all in. Go on. So I tried to help you. What? Bless you, Wish. And just how did you try and help us? And how didn't it work out? Well, only because my uncle-in-law in Sedalia. Oh, I never told you about him, did I? Uh, well, he didn't... didn't, uh... Didn't what? Didn't like my looks. Wouldn't speak to me. As a matter of fact, he... Wouldn't even recognize me. And as another matter of fact, he had me thrown out of his presence. And as a last matter of fact, he, I snuck back into camp and can't say I helped one solitary thing. Uh, any questions? Worst bone, you're a flat mouthed liar. You smell that money that you ran out on. Oh, I didn't hear one word about it. But I'm mighty glad for everybody. Uh, get a nice price, did you? Oh, enough to pay the wages you got coming, if any, now. Well, don't worry about that. Uh, how much did you get? Twenty ahead. Twenty dollars? Why, those thieving... You didn't know anything about it, huh? Wait a minute. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. Uh, not a thing. I 
got to get the cooking done. But you should have held out for more. Twenty dollars isn't enough. It's enough for us. How about it, Mr. Favor? All right. Line up or count it out. But until we get the herd turned over tomorrow, you can't go into town. Tastes funny, don't it? Yeah. I like Mushy's cooking this morning better. You two complaining about the food after all the guzzling you've done these months? Well, maybe I just never spoke up before. Plenty of seconds, everybody. No, thank you. Hey, look it. Ain't that our buyer? Getting early, ain't you? You said morning. I didn't come for the herd. I want my money back. This is Marshal Thorpe of Sedalia. If you don't hand it over, he'll throw you in jail. What? You made a deal. You tried to pull a swindle on me, sending that fake cattle buyer into town. What are you talking about? Mr. Smith, or whatever his name is, that's what I'm talking about. $35 a head for his big interest back east, that's what I'm talking about. But he's not registered at the hotel. And when we wired back east, we found that his big interest, Nolan and Yates, don't exist. Wait a minute. What did this Mr. Smith look like? Whiskery old character. I should have known from his looks he was a common criminal. Wishbone? Yeah. But that's him. That's the man. I told you, Marshal. Well, Mr. Favor didn't have anything to do with this. It was all my own idea. Now, you can throw me in jail if you have to. But uh, he didn't have anything to do with it. None of them did. I don't believe you. Arrest him, Marshal. Now, now, all you want your money back, isn't it, Matt? Well? Well, there's no use throwing anybody in jail. He was just trying to help his boss out of a hole. <laughs> you weren't so mighty innocent, Mr. Secretary. You were pretty quick to recognize a $15 head profit. I want my money back. Every cent of it. You'll get it. It's not all there. You'll hear from me. Thanks, Mr. Faber. Just don't let any of your men try anything like that again. I might have to do something about it. Wishbone? I know. I'm sorry. I thought it'd work. I sure didn't think it'd turn out like this. I didn't know they were gonna call it a swindle. I'm sorry I had to hit you, Pete. What? Well, well, you couldn't hit hard enough to hurt anybody. Well, I'm sorry you all had to give the money back. Uh, wishbone about those seconds, sir. I'd like some. Yeah, me too. I'm hungry. I haven't had any decent food since you left, Wish. It'd be good to have real cooking again. Well, right over here. What now? We can't stay here where it's costing us money we ain't got. We'll move them out in the morning. Yeah, but where to? Northwest Nebraska. Find some range we can winter them on. It's the only thing. Unless we can find a buyer on the way. I don't know how the men are going to take to that, whether they'll go along or not. Give them IOUs and let them go. We'll have to keep enough to hold the herd. I think we'll have that. Yeah, hey, well, what about Miss Card? Well, you got to pay her, too. We'll have to take an IOU, too. <laughs> Nothing else we can do. Nutty, put them down so they don't crowd in at the gate. All right. Well, I ought to take down some of that fence. Ah. I don't want to have to pay for damages on top of what we already owe. Marshal Thorpe from Sedalia. And Mrs. Cardwell's man. Mr. Favor, I'm sorry. You'll have to move your herd back. Why? Unless you're prepared to pay what you owe Mrs. Cardwell. Of course, I can't pay cash right now. Made up an IOU, though. It's just going to drop by the house. Won't do. I've got an injunction. Court order. She wants her money in cash before you move one head off her land. You and every man here will be in contempt of court, liable for a stiff fine and jail sentence if you move them. 
You want to risk that? Move them back! Where are you going? I'll talk with Mrs. Cardwell. Let Rowdy know. I can't pay, and you know why. And you knew it from the beginning. You signed an agreement. So it was just a trap. You knew I couldn't sell the herd. You also agreed not to move them until you paid. Well, I made out an IOU. You're taking the herd out to open range and winter them. When I sell them in the spring, you'll get your money. With interest. I'll get it now. How? I'll take the cattle off your hands. You'll buy them? How much? Ten dollars a head. Ten? I could have said less. I got men out there. I got to pay them. Ten dollars will pay them. I could sell them almost as much for tallow. You'd have to move them first. You all sewed up, huh? And you knew it from the start. Why? It's my business. Well, it's my business now. Who is it, anyway? Your husband? Blaming all cattlemen for his death, huh? It was cattlemen that did it. Swindled him, took away his life's work, everything he valued, loved. So you're blaming us who didn't even know him? No, there's more. You belong to a breed of men. You come tearing into a town like a bunch of maniacs. Shooting, drinking, killing. I had a son. And you won't have much to celebrate with this time. Ten dollars a head, take it or leave it. Well, I won't take it. What are you going to do? I'm going to fight you, lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. I was only doing my duty. She's a strange old woman. Just the same, don't try taking him out. What are we gonna do? We'll take him out. Tonight in the dark. May mean a fight. Yeah, I know. We won't have a law on our side this time. Oh, may God I owe yous. Any man who doesn't want to ride tonight is free to leave. No hard feelings. Collins? I owe you don't buy no fun in town. Tonight, then. Getting ready to push him through. Good. You didn't show any movement before it was dark, did you? No. What about the gate, though? We got no time to fool with the gate. You men get to work on that fence. Keep it as quiet as you can. Rowdy, tell them not to push the cows too hard. We don't want them belling up a racket. We ready up here? I'm 
wanted here, trail boss. My men will have to fire. Let's see how many of them there are. I warned you, Mr. Faber. All right, you win. Now you're under arrest, all of you. Look, he's hurt. We gotta get him someplace where we can do him some good. Let's get him up to the house. Mr. Cardwells? Yeah, no place else. Easy. Let's go. Easy. Hurt. Well, don't bring him in here. I don't want your kind around. Get out of the way, Mrs. Cardwell. Come Too bad. I know what's the matter. Maybe it was a fall off of the horse. He's young, isn't he? Well, how bad is it? I just don't know. The bullet's gotta come out of there. Well, yeah, I can do that. Well, I'll get some hot water. Excuse me. Who's got my doctor bag? Here you are, wishbone. in? No, you can stay here. But there'll have to be a charge, so don't try to leave. My men will stay to watch. I thought you people wanted trail herds in Sedalia. We do. Not everybody's like Emma. The merchants in town were praying you'd sell your herd because they need your business. Marshal, what do you think we'll get? Well, I think I can arrange with the judge to let you all off with fines, providing your man in there don't die, and that ain't likely. What are we going to pay them fines with? Well, that's up to you. I'll do all I can. Just don't try to get away again. Come on. Mr. Faber, we've been talking to this, some of us. And, well, we just figure you're licked. Now, we was willing to stick around as long as there's anything we could do. You want to make a run for it? No, sir. No, we don't. We just like going to go into town and pay our fines and be done with it. How many times have I got to tell you I ain't got the money? Now, you can sell to Mrs. Cardwell. For $10 a head? That'd make our pay. Pay our fines, too. What about the owners? Well, I'm sorry about you and your reputation. Well, I'm not about to give up yet. But... Say your favor. I found this man snooping around the herd looking at the cattle. Who are you, mister? My name's Draper, Mr. Favor. I represent the government. I'm buying beef for the army. You a buyer? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Smith? Well, just call me Wishbone. Wishbone? You said you were buying cattle, mister? Oh, yes, for the Missouri River forts, uh, Leavenworth and Atchison. The army needs quite a bit right now. They're moving the Pawnee tribe south to Indian territory. They have to be fed. How much do you need? Well, I'll take all you have. 
At what price? I was authorized before the panic to offer $33 a head for prime beef. Now, I understand you've had a higher offer, but that's the best I can do. You said before the panic, what's the price now? Well, my authorization has never been changed. Perhaps the government wants to keep the price up. Anyway, that's my offer. Mr. Draper, I accept. There's uh, just one thing, though. Yeah, what? I, uh, I can't pay you in cash. We pay off in government paper. Government paper? Redeemable with interest 30 days after delivery, upon presentation in Washington. That won't do us any good here. Nobody to redeem it, no cash in town. Unless the banks. And I'm afraid the banks won't cash them either, right now. Them merchants in town, they won't take it for cash? Uh, no. How are we going to pay Mrs. Cardwell's grazing fee? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. You, you wait here. Just one minute. If, if you could take this government paper instead of the cash, I'll redeem it as soon as I can. And if you could take just a little bit more for security and let me have enough cash so I could pay them in, I'd, I'd take it as a great kindness. How do I know I'd get my money back? I give you my word, as soon as I get the money from back east, I'll send you yours, and you can send me the paper. How do I know it's any good? It's issued by the government. You don't comfort me. I want value received when I give cash. All right, I've, I've, I've got some stock cattle, cows and calves, about 200 head. You can use them to start your own herd on this grass. I'll sell them for the cash I need. No, no cattle, no government paper. I want cash. Sorry for you. I've known women before who lost their son and husband. It didn't warp them, make them inhuman like you. Now you're not hurting just me and my men, like that boy in there. You're depriving your own neighbors, people who ought to be your friend. But you don't care about that, do you? You don't care about anything except your own personal little hate. I'm sorry for you. Cardwell? I better be moving along. Oh, no, you stay put. I want to thank you for taking care of me. Look, I wouldn't worry too much about what Mr. Favor said. He gets a little riled up sometimes. Not that he hasn't got reason to this time. You know, we're... We're really stranded here with no money, no job. No way to get home, nothing. Well, you could stay here, work for me. I need a hand. Well, I, I couldn't do that, not knowing my friend is still in trouble. How about your boy? Why don't you tell me about him? What was he like and all? Oh, he was uh, just an ordinary boy, I guess. Just like any other. Oh, he didn't seem ordinary to me. Yeah, never seems that way to a mother. I was the apple of my mother's eye, even when I was in trouble. And that was often. She just about had a fit when I went off to work cattle. He always wanted me to be a preacher, a lawyer, or something like that. Yeah, he wanted to be a cowboy, too. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, but he didn't leave. No, I didn't let him. And then he, he started dressing like that. Hanging around the pens and the cattlemen, waiting for the herds to come in, drinking with the men, wearing a gun. 
was bound to happen sooner or later. The fight. He didn't know what he was doing. Ma'am, you... You see, when men get to the end of a trail drive, they like to live some. There's a lot of long, hard months out there. Wind and rain and cold and dust. Rivers flooding. Sometimes men dying. Well, there ain't no mother out there to comfort a man. No woman to ease loneliness. So when a man gets to town, he likes to... You know, live a little. But uh, it, it isn't usually the cattlemen who do the shooting and killing. It's usually men just hanging around town, have nothing else to do but cause trouble. A lot of them boys just trying to prove they're men. Well, fighting's the only way they got to doing it. You're saying it's my fault. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that maybe it isn't the fault of your boys or, or the man who killed them. You see, I know how your boy felt. I'd been in the army and everything, and my mom had to let me go. Well, I'd better be moving along now. No, you... I want to thank you for your kindness, though. I'm not kind. I'm not kind at all. <laughs> hey, look, here comes Roddy with Mrs. Cardwell. How do you feel, Roddy? Oh, a little rocky, but I'll be all right. Mr. Favor, you told me you had some stock cattle, about 200 head. About that? Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to look them over, and uh, if they're in good condition, I might be willing to pay $30 a head, not a penny more. Uh, cash? Well, yeah, I guess if it's all right with Mr. Draper here. Well, I just want the beef, not the stock cattle. All right, it's fine, just fine. I, uh, I brought this uh, so that you could pay your men. We can settle the exact amount later. Oh, I don't know how to thank you, oh, man. Never mind that. I'm sorry you about You had that. a right to be angry, Mr. Favor. My, that smells good. Yeah, that's Wishbone's cooking. Well, I'd be proud if you'd stop and have a bite with us, man. Well, I, I'd like that, sir. Oh. Mr. Favor, when when do we go to town? When you get these cattle delivered in the loading pens at the rail yard, you're practically stepping up to the bar. <laughs> hey, Roddy. Uh, yeah. How'd you do it? Oh, well, uh, I didn't. She did it all on her own. I just helped keep her on the right track. Like I used to do my ma. You know, I
this what you call prime beef, cowboy? That's what the government buyer called it. Why? You a judge of cattle? I know a scrawny cow when I see one. Well, they've done pretty good for scronies. They come 1,500 miles in their own power. And uh, ain't it your job just to count them and load them, Captain? Is this the last of them? You taking the tally, Cap. You resent my rank, do you? No, oh, I just don't much like anything about you. You're still fighting the war, is that it? You Texans, you never know when to quit, do you? Maybe not. If I had my way, we'd still be fighting it. But if you don't fight any better than you work, you're never going to get anywhere. Now get him in there! <laughs> Town. I've been gone as fast as I can, Mr. Yeah. 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 Come on, you're supposed to be ramrod. Let's get him moving. Look, you've been riding me all day. What have I done? Ain't what you've done. They should have been loaded two hours ago. Can I help it if these army men don't know how to cut and classify? They ain't supposed to be able to. All right, you were the ones that were hot to get to a saloon. Look, he's got a rattlesnake inside and gnawing away at his guts. I hope he chokes on it. You think he'd be glad being at the end of the trail and all? Maybe he is. Maybe even more than the rest of us. That's it, they're all in. Well, according to my tally, we're too short. Not by ours. Maybe you missed them. And maybe not. I'm not going to argue about two steers. I'll pay you myself. Ah, never mind. I'll accept your count. Delivery taken. Thanks. That's it. Horses in the corral with a remuda. They'll be staying here. So? Yep. You men who got personal horses, cut them out. The rest of you wrap your saddles in burlap. Put them in the wagon. Well, maybe I'll just keep mine. Maybe I'll never get in a saddle again. I think maybe I'll do the same. Take off and see the world. Whatever you like. I'm contracted to take a new herd through come spring. Any of you show up, there'll be a place for you. Not me. I'm through trail herd and I had enough dust soaked up, enough cold and rain to last me a lifetime. Yep, me too. Never again. I may take the trail again. Not with you. Whatever you like. How about you, Roddy? Uh, I've had my fill. I think I'll try something else. When are you taking the train back to Philadelphia, boss? Ah, uh, tomorrow morning. Nothing to keep me here. Well, don't you want to stay over and relax? Get drunk? Oh, I got better things to do. Well, I can understand you being anxious to see your kids. Oh, yeah. Everything's all taken care of in town. I know there's plenty of room in the back of the wagon for everybody's gear. Good. Uh, while I was in there, I went to the post office. A letter for you from Philadelphia. Twice good. Read it to me, will you? It might be personal. It's from your sister-in-law. Nothing you can't hear. Gil, dear, since I know it was not just to see the children that you were coming to Philadelphia, I am afraid I have some bad news. Yesterday, Millie Dutton got married. None of us had any idea that... Never mind. Sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. Maybe it was not the best remuda I ever wrangled, but... Oh, I don't know. I've had better strings. Oh, midnight, they're like riding a bag of rocks. The hardest trot I ever set. It was a good company on Nighthawk, though. Caboose. Didn't have all the speed in the world, but probably the best swimming horse I ever had. Saved my life crossing the red. Yeah, you can kick them, you can cuss them, you can hate them like poison sometimes, but 
After all those weeks, it ain't easy to walk off and leave them. Well, what's everybody moping about? They're not your horses anyway. You got your horses. Let's go. Come on, everybody. We're going to town. Let that wagon go. Wish we're almost in town now. Yeah, we can almost walk to it from here. No, going into town's gonna be dead right, charging in like the cavalry does. You can ride on behind me, Wish. Come on. See that, Mushy? Ever seen anything like that? Looks like any other town. Well, it ain't any other town. That's Sedalia. Means the end of the line. No more riding back to the herd. No more nursing those stupid beasts. No more sleeping on the ground. Eating up your lap. From now on, it's gonna be bed and tables and tablecloths. Oh, boy, that's right. Doesn't seem fitting just riding in. We all ought to get down and kiss the ground, probably. I'll do it for you. <laughs> get on, buddy. Let's go. Achico! <laughs> Shot out of your hide, you quiet down, all of you, right now. You know what we do with marshals down in Texas? They start acting like lawmen and spoiling our fun. We just up and ride them out of town. Well, it'll be the other way around here. Unless I decide to keep you for a spell in jail. Ah, you're pretty tough, ain't you? Tough enough. What's the matter, Marshal? Don't you want our business here? You're welcome as long as you behave yourselves. Like good little boys. Mister, we come here to celebrate. Sure. Just observe the laws. The first thing will be to take off those guns and check them at the hotel. Check our guns? Oh, no. Well, Mr. Faber? Oh, well. There ain't nothing we can't handle barehanded anyway. With one hand tied. Pardon me. Is that the herd crew that just came into town? It looks like it. Just as long as the sights are pretty. <laughs> with dimples. I like them all with dimples. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> with dimples. <laughs> be sure you get washed good behind the ears, boy. Don't want them dance hall girls to see how green you are. Oh, cut it out, Mr. Wishbone. Ain't likely to have any competition from you anyway. Whiskers. <laughs> oh, is that soft? <laughs> wow! <laughs> hey! What are you... Oh, man. Oh, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Get even with you if it's the last thing I do. Hey, Pete, get the barber. Pete. Hey, hey, hey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. I give him a good. Come on, give him a shave. So help me, I'll get you. Easy. Come on. Just one whisker, mister. Just one whisker. Come on, he ain't ferocious. Go on, get it. Come on. Come on, here. Come back here. That's the first time I've seen you look scary in one like that, Wishbone. <laughs> it wasn't the look. It was this, and I'd have shot him, and you too. I wish we're just joshing you. So Come on, let's go. Get your hat, boys. Let's get out of here. here. All right. Oh, Let me have something to wipe this off with. I still wonder what you'd look like with a shave. All right, you just hurry up. 
And if I know those Jaspers, we'll be in the first saloon. You tell them I'm coming. Well, where do we start? Might as well start right here. Uh -huh. Gotta watch those mothers. Hey, look! He's flying. Nigh on to it, I guess. Permanent? Well, not unless that saloon keeper sold him poison liquor. You know he drank $10 worth in 20 minutes? I thought it's something funny he was so willing to let everybody go ahead of him in the bathhouse. Yeah, well, he looks like he could use a cold one right now. That's providing he's still alive. Well, his feet still tracks. Clear the door and I'll point him. Mushy will take care of him in there. Yes, sir, Mr. Nolan. Just take him in there and give him a shave. You'd like to have a shave, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. This way. No, wait a minute. There's a better one down this way. I ain't going anywhere until I get dressed up. Get some clean clothes somewhere. I'll go over and help you pick out some. All right. Push bone. Take care of this for me, will you? What's that, your poke? I'll accept $50 of it. Figure that's enough to have a good time on. I want to wake up in the morning, have the rest of it. I got places to go and things to do. Might go back east and see the sights. Well, what do you want to give it to me for? Why don't you give it to Mr. Favor or the bank? How you know I'll wake up in the morning and have it? Well, I trust you more than I trust me. Well, I'm not sure I do. Yeah, but you ain't going to get drunk or gamble it away or maybe get rolled of it by some no account dance hall queen or nothing. I ain't. Well, then what am I here for? Compañeros, how do you like this shirt, eh? Oh, ain't quite my taste, but it might look good on you, Jesus. Si, si. I, I think I'll buy it. Por favor, how much is this? Too much. ¿Qué dices? More than you can pay. I, what do you mean, señor? I mean this store ain't for the likes of you. And just what's the matter with the likes of him? I think you're making a mistake, mister. Or maybe you don't see so good. Oh, now, just a minute, man. I can serve whoever I want to. And we've got a right to trade wherever we want to. Well, oh, wait. It was just a mistake. Well, that kind of mistake can be fatal. You've been lucky so far. <laughs> Come on. Jesus. Well, there's another store down the block. Mr. Favor, you want to come along with us? We're going to have a little celebration. No, thanks. Well, it might cheer you up. What makes you think I need cheering? Come on. Come on, Wishbone. We decided we needed a drink. Might have known you wouldn't get past the first saloon. What's the matter? Wouldn't he come with you? Uh, who cares if he comes with us? The way he's acting, he'd just ruin the party anyway. You ever think maybe he's got troubles you don't know about? What troubles? He's just got a disposition like 10 miles of bad trail, that's all. Oh, pardon me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Allow me, ma'am. Anything I can do you for, ma'am? Why, thank you. I just wondered if one of you gentlemen might tell me where I could find Johnny Coulter. But what's the matter? Oh, nothing. I mean, uh... Uh, did you say Johnny Coulter? That's right. He was with your trail herd, wasn't he? He wrote and told me he'd be. Yes, ma'am. He was. Was? You mean... You mean he's not here now? Uh, did something happen? Did he have to stop off somewhere? Yes, ma'am. Uh, he had to stop off, all right. He had a little accident. An accident? But what kind of an accident? Well, you see, ma'am... Well, he, he drowned crossing the little river down in the nations. It was just a little river, but it was flooded pretty high that day. Oh, no. Pardon me, ma'am, but what was Johnny Coulter to you? I was to meet him here. 
We were going to be married. Oh, uh, miss? Well, now, ain't that a fine kettle of fish? Poor kid. Yeah, she's all by herself now. Probably broke, too. I don't know. She don't look too poor to me. Not even too broke up. What'd you expect her to do, go blubbering all over the place? Uh, she looks like one that could take care of herself. Besides, what was she doing mixed up with Johnny Coulter? He wasn't any prize. Well, that's true. I ain't even sure that was his real name. Well, have a gal like that in love with him. He must have had something. Well, if she loved him. Anyway, it isn't any affair of ours. Besides, are we gonna let it spoil our party? No, let's no, have a drink. Come on, let's go. Sure was a pretty girl. Well, where is he? He's dead. Drowned in the creek. Do you really expect me to believe that? It's true. I sort of figured you'd try to pull something like this. You still love him, is that it? Or, uh, or maybe you just want the whole reward for yourself. I tell you, he's dead. Uh -huh. Oh, not yet. But he's going to be. Soon. Upside down. Please. Steady now. Thank you, gentlemen. That will be a humdinger, I assure you. Come back tomorrow and I'll have the copies for you then. Oh, that'll set the art of photography back a hundred years. That's well, a good thing you weren't in that wishbone. They'd never be able to see anything behind that bush anyway. Come on, Collins, wake up. You done got yourself. What's work? That's that word there. Immortalized. Yeah, in tin type. Come on, get him out of there. We have other customers to serve. Oh, <coughs> thank you, you Sheldon Yankee. Please, if you're finished. I seen you somewhere before. You was with the Federals at Pittsburgh Land. I'm afraid not. Well, I was. I was with Johnston. And if you hadn't have killed him, we'd have won the war right there. Maybe so, sir. Maybe so. What kind of an answer is that? What do you think we can prove by fighting it all over again here? I mean, yeah. Come on, Just, well, come on. just one. Hello. Collins. Dern Yankee! Collins, you make me sick. The war's over. Can't you get that through your head? You are probably a Yankee spy. Yeah, like Quince and Robbie. You're in a nest of vipers. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. That's just what he needs. Who is it? Remember me? Frost? Yeah, I met you at the Cattlemen's Association a few days ago. Oh, yeah, the trail boss came out of the herd just ahead of mine. That's right. By a couple of weeks. You still around? Which... Well, I had a reason. That's uh, that's what I'd like to talk to you about. Oh, come on in. Uh, sit down. Thank you. Drink? No, no, thanks. A little early for me. I guess your troubles are about over. You've got good money. Others can't sell their herds at any price. So do you. Yeah, sold before the panic hit. We were both lucky. Is that what you come to talk about? Well, partly. You know, I was thinking, uh, aren't you a little sick of trail driving? <laughs> you know, it's a rough, hard life. And you can't make very much of it. Well, nobody's forcing you. No, I, 
I've driven my last herd. I'm talking about you. Go on. I'm giving you a chance to get out of it for good. Cash in on your luck. Oh. Going in business with me. Partners. What kind of business? Wintering, fattening, cattle raising. There's no limit. Where? Lease land up near Aglala. We'll have an option to buy. Now, that's a good place. I've had my eye on it for a long time. Now I got the stake to that I need, but you know, with a partner, that would ensure success. How much? We each put up 10,000. You should have that much when you cash your part of these profits. Then? Then we can buy plenty of cattle cheap. Something down the line. They don't have to be the best this way. Winter them, fatten them, wait for prices to go back up. Then sell next summer at fat profits. Then reinvest in stock cattle coming up trail. Raise them. Pyramid. Become a rancher, huh? Yeah. Well, you know yourself that as soon as there's enough stock growing up here near the railroad, there'll be no more Texas drives. Maybe that won't be for a number of years. But now's the time to make the jump. Now, with the panic driving prices so low. And you and I are among the few with the cash to use. Contract to bring another herd through come spring. Well, cancel it. Forget it. That won't break your heart, will it? This is a chance in a lifetime. I don't know. Well, I'm going to make the jump whether you come in or not. But you know, together, we can make it big. Let me think about it for a while. How long? I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You know, uh, money's a lot better than liquor for helping a man forget his troubles. Beast, that's what's the matter with it. He's right. It's terrible. What kind of cook you got back there, anyway? Can you do any better? No, but he can. You know, he's right. The best cook this side of the border. I should hope I could cook better than that. He's right. Go ahead and show him. Go ahead, Now, just a moment. Just a minute, please. Out of my way, frog face. Now, you can't go in that kitchen. I have two of the best cooks in this You know, you ought to be put in jail for serving food like that. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean, jail? Right. Yeah, that's right. 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 Now, mister, you're going to find out what real cooking is. Well, I got work to do. Sit down, you ain't going to have a place. Collins, fix me a straight bourbon. Straight bourbon, come on. Take a pint, a quart, and mix it. Calvert. I understand your boss, that trail herd, came into town today, Faber. That's right. You had a man riding with you, one by the name of Calder? Johnny Calder? What about him? I'm looking for him. You friend of his? No, no friend. And what did you want with him? I've got a reason. Well, you also got a long ride down to the nations in a shallow grave by an unnamed creek. Is that right? That is right. If you ain't a friend of his, what did you want him for? I think you know. Now, would I be asking? Oh, yeah, that was something about Johnny. I sort of figured he was on the dodge. You figured good? Unless somebody told you. A lady, maybe? Lady? Don't tell me she hasn't got to you yet. Your stories fit too well. What are you talking about? The bounty, the reward for Calder, dead or alive, it's a nice one. I guess you figured to split it with you instead of me. Well, I do admire her choice. 
You know, it ain't a very nice thing, seeing as she was going to marry him. She? Who, who is she? Are you trying to tell me you never heard of her? Laura Carter? I never heard of her. Favor, I don't believe you. Look, mister, you don't scare a bit. Now get out of here and don't come back. Well, no, you don't scare me either. I just want you to understand I don't buy your story. I'm going to find Kohler. You're not going to stop me, you or Laura Carter. You're welcome. You get a nice long ride. You know, sooner or later, Kohler's going to come to me. Or rather, he'll, uh, he'll come to Laura. Good day, Mr. Faber. See what you're doing here in Scotland, and I'll just have to call the marshal. Yeah, you bet. Fast. <laughs> Hi, boy. What you drinking, honey? Water. Water. He don't drink. <laughs> well, now isn't that real cute? Would you care to dance, Sonny? You don't dance, neither. No. But, but I do. You do? Well, come on. Like this, you'll probably make a fortune, too. Yes, sir. A wishbone's eatery. Uh, the uh, truck wagon beanery. Cafe wishbone, that's what it'll be. Wishbone, we gotta do something for her. For who? For that poor girl, Johnny Colder's widow. She ain't a widow at all. Well, she's practically a widow. Anyway, she's destitute and broke, probably, and I'm gonna take up a collection for her. Not for me, you won't. What's the matter with you? Don't you want to help a girl out who's broken destitute? And um, um, she, she's probably headed for a life of degradation. Oh, well, she's probably there already. <laughs> Mr. Faber. Your men are beginning to get a little out of hand. Here it is still early in the evening. Uh, we're getting complaints already. So? Yeah, I thought maybe you'd like to do something about it before I have to. It ain't none of my affair. Oh, but if we pick Look, them up... they're not working for me anymore. I can't give them orders. I thought maybe you might still have some influence with them. And maybe some feelings for them. Well, the way they're going, they might wake up tomorrow broken in jail, or worse. Look, they're grown men. They gotta look out for themselves. I can only answer for me. You should see them, Marshal. Drunk, disorderly. They're singing, they're dancing, they're fighting. As long as they don't break any laws. Well, they threw a bottle at me. But they didn't hit you. Miss Laura 
Carter? Yes. My name's Favor. I was in charge of the herd Johnny Calder was with. Oh, yes, Mr. Favor. Won't you come in? Thank you. Please sit down. Well, I'll only be a minute. I'm sorry I don't have anything to offer you. I understand you were going to marry Johnny. Yes. Well, uh, you'd better have these then. Uh, some personal effects, some letters and a ring. And he had some, some money coming to you. You'd better have it. No, I couldn't take that. Well, why not? I just couldn't. Well, uh, you, you might need it. Oh, Mr. Favor, could you tell me? No, how it did... was just one of those things happened on a drive. We were crossing a creek. It was running full and fast. This horse slipped. Johnny couldn't swim. No. Say, uh, Johnny Calder wasn't his real name, was it? Wasn't it? Well, it doesn't matter to me, but it seems there's somebody it does matter to. A man named Calvert. Why is that? Probably a bounty on Johnny's head. Do you know about that? No. And do you know it for sure? No, it's just a guess. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter now. He's already dead. Yeah, but... Uh... This Calvert doesn't believe that, and he, he might cause you some trouble. There's not much he can do to me. You're sure you'll be all right here, then, alone? I'm used to being alone. I'm not sure I wouldn't have been alone, even if Johnny had lived. You mean you weren't going to marry Johnny? I hadn't made up my mind. You don't seem to miss him too much. No, not much. Are you craving for someone? What made you ask that? Oh, something about your eyes. Perhaps you're just the lonely kind, like me. I'm not grieving for anything. Are you going to be in town long? Just tonight. Have you had supper yet? Yes. But anyway, I don't feel like going out tonight. Well, Mr. Favor, I thought you'd never heard of Laura Carter. You never disappoint me, do you? I gather you understand why I figure Colt is going to come here. I told you, you're wasting your time. It's my time to waste. I just know you're going to want to make a, a donation to a poor little girl who is destined to end up in the life of uh, sin and degradation. What poor little girl now? You know, Johnny Calder's widow. Her widow would have been a, a widow to be. No, no thanks. Roy, a big one. Sure, boss. Now you're talking, you're going to join the party, huh? Yippee. Can I work for you in a new restaurant, Mr. Wishbone? We'll see, boy, we'll see. Wishbone, give me my pope. What? My money, give me my money. You told me to hold it. Makes no one ever mind, give me. 
Are you gambling again? That three-card Marty, that confidence game. Make I sure me. will not give it back to you. Never mind. You got it. Look, there's a girl from Glen Falls, New York. Her name's Lucinda. I don't care what her name or her pedigree is. I'm gonna do like I promised. Now, look here, you little buzzsaw. That's my money. Well, you told me to keep it. I never did. You took my money and you stole my money. You won't give it back. Mr. Wishbone never did no such thing. Who are you calling a liar? Oh, you, you liar. Why? Now, you leave him alone. <laughs> There you are, ma'am. I, I brought along a little something here for you that I got. No, go away. Oh, come on now, ma'am. I You don't have to do that. I, I just took up a little collection for you, that's all. So that you wouldn't go into a life. Hello, Johnny. No, it's not done. Get out of the way. <laughs> You. You're under arrest. Uh, well, wait a minute, Marsha. You, you're making a mistake. She can tell you how this all happened. Well? well come on, tell him. Come on, let's go. Look, Marsha, you, you... You see if the lady's all right? Yes, Marsha. You're making a big mistake here. Come over here while we can talk to you. It's time these cowboys were taught a lesson. Once and for all. If we put up with enough of their barbarities, they went too far this time. Robbing and murdering innocent people, molesting innocent women. I show them they can't come here and tear up our town. Do as they please. What do you think? I think it looks bad for us. Might just be bad for all of us. Maybe we best all get out of town. Get out of town? Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. What? I'm gonna go back to the hotel, strap on my gun, then figure a way to get Roddy out of this. Any of you want to leave town, that's up to you. What do we do, Mr. Nolan? Marshal? I want to see him. I thought you only answered for yourself. You're going to let me in, or ain't you?
might have prevented all this. The minute you get loose, you get in trouble. I don't need your advice at this point. What happened? I don't know. One minute I'm, I'm standing there and I'm, I'm handing her the money, and the next minute she's got a gun on me. Then some big fella comes to the door shooting at me, and I'm shooting at him. That's all I know. Did he say anything? No, he didn't. Well, he called me Johnny. What did she do? Well, then she started grappling with him, saying something like, uh, no, it ain't him, or something like that. And then, uh, then he flattened her, and that's when the shooting started. She didn't say anything when the sheriff come, huh? Not a thing. She just stood there and looked. Boy, when are you ever gonna learn that just because a woman got an angelic face don't mean she's an angel? I told you I don't need any of your advice. Well, you need somebody's. I don't look like I'm going to be needing anything anymore. Well, you're not alone. I guess I could use some advice myself. You? Yeah, it seems I ain't been doing much better than you lately. Yeah, you sure ain't. But then I guess you got your own troubles. The yeah, fellow wants me to try money. Maybe that'll work. Money? He wants me to give up this miserable trail driving. Try ranching up north here. Make a pile. Well, that ain't for you. Is it? You think I ain't bright enough to do anything else? I didn't say that. It's just that well, you're a pretty good trail boss, and that means something. You just said I ain't been doing too well. Yeah. Well, that's right. But every man's got a right to their moods, and I guess you had a reason. <laughs> what do you? What'd you decide on? I ain't made up my mind. Well, where are you going to go, huh? Back to the hotel. Yeah, well, what about me in here? Well, sure can't bust you out of here. Well, what about those people out there? That's Marshall's problem. Thanks for the visit. Bust Rowdy out of there, of course. Against that mob? We can whip them. Oh, sure. With one hand tied? Get your gun. Let's go. And show them Yankees. Didn't you get enough of that war, boy? Mr. Faber, that's Rowdy in there. I, no, I was just with him. And you're not going to lift a finger to help him? I want my advice. Unless you can think up something useful, and you'd all best just lie low. And I was feeling sorry for you trying to defend you, thinking that... Oh, it wasn't that at all. You're just plain no good. You finished? Not by a long shot. Now, maybe you do have problems. Maybe everything isn't all sunshine and good grass. That's no reason to turn sour. Some of us got problems, but we're not gonna let a friend down. Well, I can't stop you. If you want to get Rowdy into more trouble than he's already in. And those cowboys are on me. They're gonna try to spring him out of here. Get everybody over here. Get the whole town. We'll show them they can't afford it. I thought you weren't going out tonight. I changed my mind. Too much excitement. Yeah, I heard there was a shooting. Calvert by one of your men. If that's why you're here, That's well... why I'm here. Well, you can't force me. I can force you to watch a lynching. No, me. Bring it out! Bring it out! Well, everybody ready? They'll be waiting for us. Yeah, there's nothing to do but go up there and face it. Wish Mr. Fair was here. We don't need him. Come on. Here they come. Get ready.
Oh, no. Hold it up. Wishbone feet. Marshal. something to tell you. Yes. I want to tell you all about it. All right, steady now. Steady. Nobody move a muscle while I count. Now. One. Two. Three. Four. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> wow. A whole bunch of us immortal. It sure was a fine idea, Mr. Favor. It's most likely the shaggiest looking crew that ever set the for a camera. <laughs> hey, Mr. Favor, we all going to get a copy of that? Sure. In case anybody wants to remember this drive. Well, it makes a fellow stop and think. Maybe some of us won't meet to go back to San Antonio. There's some we've seen the last time. There might not be any San Antonio. Is that right, boy? Port St. Louis! Point C! What? Well, you see a man named Frost. You tell him I'm sorry I couldn't wait to talk to him, but the answer is no. Yes, I'm a fool, but I'll probably die on the trail. Oh, the meeting will be at the railroad depot at Chicken Feather Siding in four weeks. Will I see you then? Oh, uh, yeah, if I don't get caught up in some jail. <laughs> <laughs> or unless it gets caught by some other girl. Self-control. That's the secret. Good luck in Philadelphia. Thanks, Bill. Bye. Bye, boss. Have a nice trip. Seems kind of strange, doesn't it? What? I don't know. A few months ago, no one knew each other. Now we're all sort of going our separate ways. Well, there's something about a trail crew. There isn't a rougher kind of life. But it's a mighty fine life. You think we'll see them all together again? Well, let's not go burying anybody. We haven't finished our... to Philadelphia. You make connections in St. Louis. Thank you, sir. Here's the place. Right here, O'Gala. Doesn't bother you, does a friend? What? The Indian's sitting here. Makes some folks kind of nervous. I had to take him out of the other car. He was scaring a couple of old ladies. But he's with me. No harm at all, I promise you. Well, I sure don't mind if he don't. That's fine, fine. Now, just stay put now. I'll be up with the smoker. Thank you. Hmm? I am grateful for your acceptance to travel to strange, far places is difficult when one is without his loved ones. Yes, I know what you mean. anyway, a celebration or a funeral? What are we celebrating? Well, 
pocket full of money, a month with nothing to do, and nine more saloons we haven't been in yet. <laughs> well, nine saloons will take care of the money. We'll still have a month with nothing to do. Senor Pete, uh, I do not think I can last for even one more. <laughs> Drover than just pushing babes around. <laughs> All right, so it isn't a celebration, but why is there a funeral? There ain't no funeral. Well, then why is everybody so. Oh, I get it. It's the boss. Mr. Favor isn't here to lead you around by the hand. His little boys are afraid to go out alone. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves, begrudging a man a chance to have a vacation to see his kids. You've been drinking anyway. Whatever it is, I think you need a couple more. Now eat the glass this time, will you? Uh, Mr. Rowdy! Mr. Rowdy! Mr. Rowdy, I think you better take this. What is it? It's a telegraph from Mr. Favor. Mr. Favor? Well, I was passing by his telegraph office, and I heard this fellow talking to a couple drovers. And he was asking him if he knew a trail boss named Mr. Favor. Uh. So, of course, I said, I guess I did. So, the next thing I knew, he shoved us in my hand. Well, why didn't you tell him Mr. Favor's out of town? Well, you didn't give me a chance, Mr. Nolan. What am I supposed to do with it? You can't deliver it, that's for certain. Well, it might be business. Mr. Favor left you in charge. Yeah, well, suppose it ain't. Only one way to find out. Oh, yeah. From Eleanor. Well, that's your sister-in-law. That's where the kids are staying. Your visit would not be right at present time. Would upset children. Strongly urge you not to come. Letter follows Eleanor. Oh, no, no, letter follows Eleanor. <laughs> oh, well. Bartender! You have not enough room. Oh, no, no, it's not that. It's just these city clothes. The discomforts of civilization. And it takes some getting used to it again. You have been gone a long time. <laughs> Is it that obvious? The signs are plain. The face that has felt many suns. The eyes that seek. The horizon, a man of the open fields. Maybe too much so. I've almost forgotten there is another way to live. Home, family, neighbors. So you return for good? Oh, no, just a visit. See my two daughters. My wife died a few years ago. They've been staying with an aunt in Philadelphia. Philadelphia? The great city of the East? One of them. You can tell me of it? There's not too much to tell. A lot of people, a lot of buildings. Why, are you going there? Among the other cities. It will be very strange. I have never seen such a place before. We can start out even. I'm sure the people of Philadelphia have never seen anyone like you either. That is what the Colonel said. Why he asked me to come with him. The Colonel? Colonel Summers, he has what he calls a Wild West show. I am to be part of it. Doing what? Ride. Show my skill with the lance and the bow. Let the people of the East see a true chief of the Pawnee. You think this is wrong? Oh, I, I couldn't say. 
The year has been hard for my people. The winter was bitter. There is much hunger and sickness. Colonel Summers offered much money. It meant food, seed, grain, a chance to begin again. Well, of course, then, you're doing a fine thing. May it be the right thing to go so far to such a strange place. It is almost frightening. I trust we shall both find a friendly welcome and a rewarding visit. anybody to call me Maggie. I've always called you that. You don't remember me, huh? No. And my Aunt Eleanor says I should never talk to strangers. She's absolutely right. But I'm not exactly a stranger. Honest. I'm your father. Daddy. It's been a long time. But I saw his picture. He sent it last Christmas. Well, then. He had a big hat and boots, and he wore an apron on both of his legs. That's my working clothes. I got all dressed up to come to see you. You're really my daddy? Honest and truly? Honest and truly. What are you doing, child? I've told you never to speak to strangers. It's Daddy, Aunt Eleanor. It's Daddy. Gil. Hello, Eleanor. It's good to see you again. And you, but... You were expecting me, weren't you? You, you got my letter. Oh, yes, yes. But didn't you get my wire? Well, no. Is anything wrong? Not exactly. It's just that... Gillian's sick again. Margaret. Sick? It's nothing serious. She's always sick. Will you be still, Margaret? I'm sorry, Gil. This isn't a very gracious welcome. What about Gillian? Where is she? She's in her room. There's nothing to worry about, really. I'll explain after you've seen her. Oh, no, Margaret. You stay outside. Why? Well, you know how upset Gillian gets when she has too much company. Besides, you should give her a chance to say hello to her father. But he's my father, too. I'll tell you what. You see this bundle? Presents? Yeah, for you and Gillian. Now, why don't you sort them out and divide them into things that you like and things you think she'd like, huh? Sure. You haven't lost your way with women. At least not at that age. Gillian? Yes, Aunt Eleanor? Feeling better, dear? A little. Good. I have a wonderful surprise for you. Look who's here. Gillian, honey. I'm sorry to hear you're not feeling well. I'll be all right. Sure you will. We've got a lot to do. We're going to have a fine time together. That's nice. So you hurry up and get well now, here? Yeah? I'll try. It's been such a long time, honey. Got a lot of catching up to do. 
And Eleanor? Yes, dear. Will you fix my pillows? I want to lie down now. Here, let me do it. Been a long time since I've had a chance to fuss over my girl. How about that? Fine, thank you. Rest up now. I'll, I'll be in to see you later. All right. I'll bring your supper in a few minutes, dear. And Eleanor? Yes, dear. I'll be right with you, Phil. Maybe you'd better let me have it straight. What's wrong? It's nothing serious, Gail, believe me. She just happens to be a delicate child. I'm not and... talking about that. It seems that she doesn't want me here, even that she's afraid of me. Well, that's why I sent you the wire. I, I was afraid this would happen. But why? Is it something I've done? Maybe it's something you haven't done. Maggie! Maggie, what do you think you're doing? Just showing Gillian some of our puppies. Yeah. Well, maybe you'd better climb down now. I didn't do it on purpose, Daddy. Honest. I didn't mean to scare Gilly in that way. Sure, I know. She's no fun anymore. She never wants to play. She's always sick. Does she like to be sick, Daddy? Well, nobody really likes to be sick, honey. I bet she does. I don't feel well. I have to lie down. She's a sissy. Oh, you won't remember it because you're too young. But she was a real tomboy once, even wilder than you. She used to be fighting with all the boys in school, and when we went riding, she always wanted to race. Riding? A real horse? Her own pinto. I wish I could ride a horse, but Aunt Eleanor won't let me. Why not? Oh, she's afraid we'll fall off. Margaret. Your supper's ready, dear. Go in and wash up now. Yes, Aunt Eleanor. And leave that awful thing outside. Oh, it's not real. I mean, it was, but it's just a skin. Daddy says I can make a belt out of it. We'll discuss that later. Yes, Aunt Eleanor. I'll hurry. Will you wait for me, Daddy? Of course I will. Maybe it isn't important, but we always call her Margaret. Maggie just seems more fitting somehow. Perhaps. But name stick, and it wouldn't be appropriate for a young lady. Any more than an Indian bonnet and war paint? Frankly, no. This is Philadelphia, Gil. Children are raised differently here. So I notice. You asked me to take care of them. I feel as though I have the right to bring them up as I see fit. Of course you do. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm not looking for appreciation. I couldn't love them anymore if they were my own. What are we fighting about, Eleanor? I didn't realize we were. You don't want me here, do you? Only because of Gillian. Do you know the last time she got sick? When I told her you were coming. Do you know what she said to me upstairs? She was afraid you were going to take her back with you. Why should she be afraid of me? I'm her father. In name only. It's been more than two years. You're a stranger now. I've kept in touch. All the letters and presents in the world won't make up for one goodnight kiss. What are you trying to say? You have to decide, Gil, to be a real father or someone who just brings presents. You know I can't take them back. I, I'm not prepared to take care of two little girls. Not in Texas, obviously. And Eleanor. Gillian's calling you. Tell her I'll be right up. I'll fix up the bedroom for you.
little tight with the left hand, pull the arrow with those fingers, now sight along the arrow, and pull it back as far as you can. Steady now. Let it go. I did it! I did it! Gillian, did you see? Good. Hey, Gillian, how about you taking a try at it? Yeah, come on, Gillian. It's fun. Well, all right. Hold the bow in the left hand. Now, the arrow in there. Draw back slowly and... Gillian, what on earth are you doing? No, well, I'm just showing them how to protect themselves from Indians. And I hit the target. This is hardly the sort of thing to do in the house, Gil. Sorry, I didn't stop to think. And you girls were supposed to be practicing. Do Indians play the piano, Daddy? No, but then they don't play music as pretty as you do either. Really, Gil, you're, you're worse than the children. Let's see if we can't find something special to make this a real treat. Hey, how about this? A Wild West show? What's that? Well, something like a circus, only Western style. With wild animals and Indians, too? Oh, sure. Look right here. Ogulla, chief of the Pawnee tribe. Matter of fact, I know him personally. You do? I don't believe it. Why not? He didn't scalp you. <laughs> Indians aren't that savage. In their own way, they're just as civilized as we are, if not more so. And they don't kill people and burn down their houses? Oh, sure, there's a few bad people in every race, but Indians are humans, just like you. Different way of life, maybe, but underneath, just the same. Indian brave is like me, Indian children are like you. And a squaw is like Aunt Eleanor? Uh, yeah, well, sort of. Do they do the same things we do? Of course. Men work, women take care of their families, children learn and play. Games? Mm hmm What kind? Well, let's see. Come on, here. You lie down on the floor facing me. Yeah, like this. Now, put your arm up, take hold of my hand, like that. There. Now, this is called Indian wrestling. The idea is to force the other person's hand down to the floor like that. Oh, that's not fair. You're bigger. All right. You use both hands. All right. You ready? Go. Go on, <laughs> Margaret. Push it down. I can't. I can't. Ooh, try harder. Oh, come help me. Oh! <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Oh, there. Mark, <laughs> Gillian, what are you doing? Daddy's showing us a new game. Oh, look at you all hot and perspiring. But I feel all right. Well, you won't if you keep this up. Now, I want you to sit quietly or I'll have to put you back to bed. Yes, Aunt Elmore. You too, Margaret. Really, Gil, I should think you'd know better. Almost as good as you, Gillian. Remember when we rode together? Say, uh, would you like to try again? I don't think I'd better. Well, just up and down the street a little. All right. Maggie? Oh, wait, I can't. My dress is too long. Pull it up like I did. You're wearing bloomers. I think you can manage. All right. Remember how to hold the reins now, firmly, not too tight. Scared? No. We'll take it nice and easy. Gil, wait! Look at Gillian, Aunt Eleanor. Gil, no, it isn't safe. Gillian's been riding before. Come on, Gillian. It's all right, honey. 
It's all right. That's it. Settle down. Settle down. Gillian! It's all right, Eleanor. Nothing wrong. Nothing's wrong. She might have been killed. Come on, darling. I'll take you back. Not yet. The dog just frightened the horse and made him shy. She dropped the reins. The horse didn't know what to do. Nobody was giving him any orders, so he just went off on his own. Gil, this is no time for... Please, Eleanor. A horse needs a firm hand. Nothing to be frightened of as long as you've got control of it. You understand that? Let's finish our ride, then. Yes, Daddy. Is this why you came, Gil? To destroy everything I've tried to do? Now, Eleanor, you know better than that. I only know you succeeded in wrecking a happy, orderly household. You've made a roughneck out of Margaret, and you've endangered Gillian's health. There doesn't seem to be anything really wrong with her health. Have you been taking care of her the past two years? Have you sat up nights with her, nursed her, tended her hand and foot? Have you tried not tending them? I mean, kids are pretty smart. They catch on real quick the easiest way to get what they want. So I haven't done a good job. I didn't say that. Well, you're certainly trying to prove it. Eleanor, you're putting me in a bad spot. I realize how much you've done for them, how much you love them. I can't repay that. Oh, I'm not looking for repayment, Gil. I I'm just trying to bring them up the best way I know how. Fine, but isn't there some room for some fun in their life? I'm, I mean, hang it all. Do you expect me to stand still when I see something's wrong? Well, since it's that wrong, I suggest you make other arrangements. Other arrangements? Take them back with you. Bring them up your way. Wait a minute. You're their father. It's your right. Go on. Take them back to your, to your horses and cattle and cowboys and Indians. I can't do that. Well, that's one problem you'll have to decide for yourself. I'm leaving. Leaving? I'll visit some friends. You can stay here until you make up your mind. At least I'll know the children will have a decent home. your fault. Don't you worry about it. But you won't go away now, will you, Daddy? You won't leave us. No, honey. Of course not. So we pushed those steers all night long. Next morning when the storm hit, they were all safe on high ground. Good. I wish I could see a cattle drive sometime. Well, you will sometime, when you're a little bit older. Right now, it's time for bed. Daddy? It really hasn't been so awful, has it? What? Being here with us. I mean, you don't wish you were back in Texas, do you? Oh, no, of course not. Well, I do. Maggie! With us. <laughs> well, sounds like company. You two get on up to bed now. Excuse me, is there a Mr. Favor? Wishbone! Ah, hey! Gee, you <laughs> no good saddle trends. Good to see you. Come on. I wish you'd been that glad back on the drive sometimes. What are you doing here? Well, we get this telegram saying for you not to come to Philadelphia, and then we get one from you saying you're going to stay here. Yeah, when you said you weren't coming back and for Ryder to handle the next drive, we figured you must be in kind of hot water. Yeah, well, sort of. I'll tell you about it. Oh, girls! Come on in here. I want you to meet my daughters. Gillian, Maggie, there's Pete Nolan, and Wishbone. You heard me tell about them. Miss Gillian, ladies. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> uh, boss's daughter's all right. Come on, you two get up to bed now. I'll be up in a few minutes to tuck you in. Nice kids. Yeah, that's part of the trouble. Sit down, make yourselves comfortable. Are you in some kind of trouble here? Well, not exactly. Uh, no use going into the whole story. It's just that I've got to stay here and take care of the girls. Well, what about your sister-in-law? 
Well, we had a disagreement. She left him with me. The kids can always grow up in Texas. What, a cattle drive? Oh, Pete, not girls. Particularly not the way they've been raised. I couldn't just yank them out of this kind of a life. Not now. And what can you do here? I'll find a job. What kind of a job? Oh, I don't know. I haven't had too much chance to look around. I've been too busy with the girls. Well, we wondered what we was going to do in Philadelphia. What do you mean by that? We're going to stay here and take care of things while you find yourself a job. Wait a minute. Now, no arguments. It's all settled. Look, you've got to get back to the herd. Roddy and the crew's going to need you. There's time. We'll get back all right. After we see that you're bedded down properly. Oh, are you crazy? What do you know about taking care of a little girl? Can't be any rougher than riding herd on a bunch of beeves. That's right. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you where you bunk. Hey, huh? I'd have brought my saddle blankets, but I didn't think you'd want me sleeping in the yard. <laughs> Herdin' beeves. Some horse. You was mine, I'd put you out of your misery. Anything in the morning paper? No. A couple things I might be able to do. One thing sure, they don't need a trail boss in Philadelphia. Any kind of a cattleman, for that matter. I really bought myself something this time. Well, why don't you have a talk with your sister-in-law? Kind of heart to heart. Well, she was pretty mad when she left here. She can be real stubborn. Well, that runs in the family. Oh, I didn't ask for this wish. He, he wasn't handling the girls right. So you barge in like an ox and upset the whole shebang. No, I tried to work things out. Like a trail boss, I'll bet. Well, it seems to me there must be something pretty decent about her or she wouldn't leave you in the house like this. Of course there is. She's a fine woman. She loves the girls, but... Oh, you wouldn't understand. What's wrong? A parade with horses and wagons and real cowboys. <laughs> That's right. There's the colonel himself. Make you a homesick wish? Oh, I don't know. I'd stack Quince and Scarlet against these dudes any time. There he is. There's the Indian. Is he the one you know, Daddy? Yeah. Gala, guilt favor from the train. Go on, get back. If you want to talk to him, you'll have to buy a ticket. See you, was it? I don't get it. We were friendly on the train. He said he was going to perform in the show, riding and shooting. Nothing like that. The Pawnees are proud people. I can't figure a chief taking part in a sideshow stunt like that. Mm. You saw him, didn't you? See, and ain't always believing. Hey, we ain't 
open yet. Showing till tonight. We want to see Colonel Summers on business. Oh. Fourth wagon down on the right. seen enough. You two come to laugh and mock. I just want to get things straight. On the train, you said you were going to be in the show. Is this what you meant? To be treated like an animal. To stand in shame before the whites. To bring disgrace upon myself and my people. I would rather have been dragged by wild horses. Well, what do you do it for? Colonel Summers says this is what the people of the East believe a pawnee to be. This is what they wish to see. You didn't have to go along with him. Colonel Summers has many men. I am but one. These are not only for the show. He's keeping you prisoner? It will not be forever. And then Colonel Summers will pay. All of the whites will pay. My people and I will wash this insult with your blood. You want to see me? You apparently went to the wrong wagon, friend. No, we found the right one. I've seen you before. On the train coming east. Oh, yes. Only then you treated Ogala like a human. Oh, this is part of the act. That's what I'm paying him for. It's not the way I hear it. Now, you wouldn't take the word of an Indian for anything, would you? Against yours any time. What do you want, Favor? Let him go. You got no right to hold him. I have a contract. He has his money. Now he's got to deliver. He wasn't paid for this. He's being paid to perform. And he's performing the way I want. All right. The law will have something to say about this. Not much. Contract's legal. Slavery is. If that's all you came to see me about, friend, goodbye. We'll be back. Anytime. Come to the show tonight. See what a big attraction the Indian is. Why folks get so excited sometimes, they even throw things at him. You... Me? That way out. Mr. Favor in? Well, no, but he should be back any minute. Well, I'm I'm Eleanor Bradley, Mr. Favor's sister-in-law. Oh, well, sure. Come on in. I'm Wishbone, Mr. Favor's cook. Say, that's a mighty fine stove you got back there. I don't often get a chance at one's good enough to bake cake. Are the children here? Sure, you want to see them? Please. Hey, you ladies, come on down here. Somebody to see you. Be right there, Wishbone. Uh, you want to come in and sit down? Thank you. Are the, the children well? Oh, fine, fine. Not a healthier pair of fillies anywhere. I'm glad. Uh, of course, they miss you. They do. Well, being bossed by their paws is one thing, but, well, girls need a woman's hand, don't you think? Well, I used to think so, but I'm beginning to wonder. Gil certainly doesn't feel that... Oh, well, don't pay him any mind. Well, he's so used to bossing men and cattle, he don't know how to talk to a woman anymore. Well, it doesn't mean half what he says. I said some pretty awful things myself. I I wanted to see Gil and try to explain that... Aunt Eleanor! Oh, Gillian, I've missed you so. <sighs> Me too. You're feeling all right, darling. I haven't been sick once. <laughs> Aunt Eleanor! Oh, Margaret, so good to see you. 
You look wonderful, darling. Your father must be treating you very well. Oh, yes. We have lots of fun, and we play all kinds of games. Margaret, that isn't a real gun, is it? Sure it is. And your father lets you play with it? Now, wait a minute. You got no business with that. Where'd you get it anyway? From Pete's room. You mean Gil actually allows a gun in the house? Well, he... Now, give me that. You got no business with it anyway. Why not? Well, because it isn't any toy. Now, hand it over. No, don't ever point it at anybody. Now, just hold it right there. I'll take it real easy. Oh, well, now, don't get any wrong ideas, ma'am. Why, this is all a mistake. Obviously. And I'm the one who's made it. Did I do something wrong? Wrong? Didn't anybody ever tell you guns are dangerous? Well, nobody ought to fool around with these things. Almost anything can say... <laughs> See what I mean? I never thought I'd see the day when your favorite takes up the lying down. What are you talking about? Where is he? Been off the hack, I guess. Take what laying down? Pete. Pete, you've got to be reasonable. Well, what's going on? Oh, Pete's just being pig-headed. At least I'm not afraid of a fight. Well, somebody simmer down and tell me what's going on. Well, they got that Indian chained up like a slave, like a wild animal. He won't do anything to set him free. I'm doing everything I can. Yeah. The police, a lawyer. Now, that's a big help, isn't it? Well, it's the only way. The lawyer will draw up a complaint and get a subpoena. Then the police can follow up with charges. In the meantime, the Indian sits there and rots. And what good is it going to do for you to both be in jail when all you got to do is wait a few days? A few hours is too much. I wish. Will you pound some sense into him? What? Don't seem right to just leave him there if we can help him. And we can. Oh, sure. Gun you in and blast him out? Can't you get it through your thick head? This isn't Texas, it's Philadelphia. You know, and you're beginning to fit in pretty good. Maybe it's just as well you're staying here, because I never want to work for you again. Oh, uh... Well, you had a caller. Huh? Yeah, your sister-in-law came. What you want? Oh, well, I don't know. She waited and then put the children to bed, and she left said she'd be back in the morning. What's this all about? Oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure this is a good idea. I didn't ask you to go home. Well, somebody's got to be sure you don't get your head blown off. Where are you going? You're going to see a sick friend. Yeah, he's sick, real sick. Don't tell your father. No, you don't want to worry your daddy, do you? No. All right, go on back up to bed. All right. Well, it is. What are you doing up and around at this hour? We were thirsty. We went to get a drink. Both of you? At the same time? Well, I was awfully thirsty, Daddy. All right, come on. Let's get to bed. Girls? Uh, wishbone and pee. Come on, something's going on here. I'd better know about it. Well, they went to see a sick friend. Sick friend? But they didn't want you to worry. And you don't have to, Daddy. They'll be all right. Pete took his gun with him. Oh, no. Do you know where your Aunt Eleanor's staying? At Mrs. Perkins. Where does she live? Down that way. Where down there? Do you know the address? Uh, Prospect Street, 925. 925 Prospect. Do you mind staying alone for a little bit? I have to go out. It's it's important. Can we stay up and keep the light on? Yeah, sure. Come on, Gillian. I'll get in your bed and you can tell me some ghost stories.
What are you doing here? I need your help, Eleanor. You need my help? Is something wrong with the children? Oh, no, no, they're fine, but I'll have to leave them alone for a little bit. Could you go over there? I'm surprised you're that concerned. Eleanor, there's not time to explain. Could you stay with them? Of course. Thanks, Eleanor. <laughs> It's a good thing I wasn't. Where's Pete? Well, uh, never mind. I can guess. You shouldn't have left the kids alone. You got any clothes for O'Gala? He can't run through Philadelphia in a loincloth. Well, no. Uh, I thought so. Here, take these. Look, you'd better stick with Pete. Keep them out of trouble, at least until they get out of civilization. You're going to need some more money. Oh, no, we got money. It's a long, rough trip. You can't take any trains or stagecoaches. Everybody from here to Texas is going to be looking for you. Somebody's coming. Tell Pete to hold up. Someone's coming. Dodge trouble, you got a funny way of showing it. Hey, let's really give him something to keep him busy. Try and slow him up a bit. They got the Indians! Spread out! you were looking for? They could use a good horse wrangler. <laughs> Look, you better get moving to catch up with Pete. I'll get back to the kids. Yeah. Give him a big hug for me. All right, now, this is the way Daddy showed me. Make sure that the colored feather's on the outside. Now pull back and let go. Good. Can I try? Sure. All right, now, hold it firm. On pull this back, side? yes, with the red feather right. on the outside. All right, now, you try it. I wouldn't have known Gillian when I came over last night. Do you know how she met me? Sliding down the banister. <laughs> it was so good to see her active and laughing again. I guess I have been overprotecting them, Gil, but the way we've been living without a man around the house... Well, I didn't have to barrel in here and find the one thing wrong and not mention everything else that you've done so right. 
Well, it gets pretty frightening sometimes. When they're not your own, somehow you feel the responsibility even more. I could have taken the time to find that out. Eleanor, the reason I left them with you in the first place is because I trusted you and your love for them. I still do. You remember that while I'm away? I have the feeling they'll grow up in spite of us. I'm sorry about your disagreement with Mr. Nolan. Pete and I have had disagreements before. Couldn't take a chance on him bringing Ogala here. I didn't want to involve you with the children in the summers. But will they get away? Why well, send Wishbone after them? He'll keep them out of trouble. have to go, Daddy? The sooner I get back to work, the sooner we can be together. But when will we see you again? I hope it won't be too long. See, maybe come this summer we can talk your Aunt Eleanor into seeing what folks in Texas live like. Will you, Aunt Eleanor? Will you? It sounds like a wonderful idea. We'll all look forward to it. Goodbye, Eleanor. And thanks. Thank you, Gil. Just remember, no matter how long it is or how far apart we are, when you love someone, you're always with them. Train in sight yet. Kind of glad. I don't think I could stand all that noise. Must have been something wrong with that whiskey they served back in town. I never heard of a three day hangover before. Well, I got one. Anyway, we might be better off, Mr. Favor, ain't in on that train. I'm beginning to think maybe he got held up in Philadelphia by something or another. Always said Mr. Favor's one trail boss with brains. Is that what you always said? Maybe decide to stay in Philadelphia. No, he gotta, he's gotta come out here. He's gotta get the cattle money. Back to the ranchers in San Antonio. About money, uh, Rowdy, I, I know what I did with all my money, and uh, I know what happened to Joe's, but what did you do with yours? Uh, <sighs> see, I had a few drinks, and then I got into that card game at the Bonton Saloon. There's where my horse went. Mine, too. Uh, yeah, that's right. You were there, weren't you? That sure was a good horse you used to have. Well, that was before I met the girl from Glen Falls, New York. 
I remember hearing about an old girl from Glen Falls, New York. You know, that's funny. I've been thinking about her. I have a feeling Glen Falls never heard of her either. Glen Falls, New York is a long way from Sedalia, Missouri. I guess the train fare kind of cleaned you out, huh? I hope Mr. Faith is on this train. You know, it's a funny thing. There ain't a drover born that don't draw every other breath on the trail of cussing the day to become one. You can take him off the trail now. I'm hungry. Well, now that's what I mean. You're pushing cattle north. There ain't no whiskey to drink. There ain't no pretty girls to look at. There's nothing but bees and dust. Sure do get fed regular. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of hungry. We thought, being as you had the chuck wagon here. Well, are you planning on eating it? Because I'm planning on eating the saddles and all that gear. It's all we got in there. I wonder what it's going to taste like. You, you mean you don't have any food in the wagon at all? I'm lucky I got the wagon. Almost afraid to ask. Oh, I ain't ashamed to tell you. It was a couple, three nights ago, I wandered into one of those saloons in town. Oh, purely by accident, I was looking for a glass of milk. Anyway, I don't remember much, but. There was this woman who'd original come from Glen Falls, New York. Oh. Both horses wish? Well, she was ailing pretty bad. Looking train. You bet. If it has Mr. Favor aboard. Well, if Mr. Favor is aboard, we don't want to bother him with our troubles, do we? No, 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 sir. He'll be pretty tired traveling all that way from Philadelphia. See you, boss. We got the rest of your stuff on the truck wagon. It was good to see you, boy. Good to see you. You're looking great. Real great. So do all of you. Matter of fact, I haven't seen you look like you look. Yeah, that's better. Say, how come so many of you down here? I thought you'd still be busy in town. Well, we kind of finished up our business in there. Yeah, yeah, sure did. Comfortable riding on a train like that. Comfortable enough to sleep in, I bet. 
Say, I hope one of you remembered to bring an extra horse along for me. Oh, I forgot. Of course, I can ride into town in the chuck wagon. Can't I? You sure can, boss. You can ride anywhere the chuck wagon's going. Only thing it is, it ain't going anywhere. I would have gladly brought you along a horse, boss. I don't seem to have one either. Us neither. Well, how are you ever expecting to get to San Antonio? You're going to hire us all again, ain't you? Well, I was thinking about it. But... Well, it's, you know, we can pick up horses in this country. That's easy. No trouble getting rid of one either, especially in this part of the country, huh? I don't see how you can think. You're right, boss. It is easy to get rid of them. Every one of them? Boss, don't ask any questions. We wouldn't want to lie to you, and you wouldn't want to hear the truth. Fair enough. That leaves five of us on foot in the middle of Missouri. Hey, well, well, you're going to hire us on again. Maybe you could advance us some money, and we'd go back into town and buy them back. The only money I got is from the sale of the herd, and every penny of that's got to get to the owners in San Antonio. I don't even have enough money to buy a horse myself. You too? I mean, Glen Falls, New York, isn't that far from Philip. Forget I said anything. Well, it's going to be a long walk back to Texas. And we ain't used to walking. I don't mind the walk so much, but who's going to haul the chuck wagon? That's easy. The chuck wagon stays here. Oh, no. I lost my money, and I lost both my horses. But one thing I ain't going to lose is that chuck wagon. I was dreaming. See what you mean. Them ain't gophers. Those are horses. Horses? Oh, yeah, horses. Must be 40 or 50 of them. Must be. We only need six. That's so all we'd need. Maybe we could buy six or so. Without any money? Well, there's more than one way of getting a horse. Scarlet, give you your gun belt. Sure, boss. Oh, wait a minute. Boss, we need horses. Talking won't get you any. I ain't gonna let him do it. I guess he's doing it for us, boys. I know that. You can't stop him once he's made up his mind. Well, that being the case, the least we can do is help him. Nice lot of horses you got there. They ain't bad. How many? Forty-eight. Mm -hmm. They all in good shape? They sure are. We'll uh, take those horses now. And don't give us any trouble. We've been drinking, or have they? Hey, ain't you forgetting something? Well, there were supposed to be 50 horses, but only 48 were delivered. Keep your hands right where they are. Don't make a move, neither of you. I'll take some money along with the horses. Oh, oh. Boss, a horse deal is one thing. Sure, we can use the money, but taking it off the same Jaspers we take the horses off of don't seem right. I'll decide what's right. Let's have the money. Sure. If you don't mind, Mr. Favor, we have rather a tight schedule. We'll be moving along now. All right, get moving, both of you. Quint, Scarlet, come out here and help unload these horses. That, they'll be back in no time with armed men. Why? Because you didn't have your face covered, that's why. Well, that's what they always do, isn't it? Come back with armed men. What for? 
Oh, boss, you've been in Philadelphia too long. You're out here now. All you got to do out here is whistle and you got a posse, and this time with railroad bulls. Just because I bought some horses? Bought? What? <laughs> I know you were kidding all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? No. Oh, well. well. I sure am relieved to know that you're not a horse thief or a train robber. For a while there, I thought I was. Well, I'm glad to know if I ever want to steal a horse or rob a train here behind me. Oh, I bought 50 horses, and they only came up with 48. That's the reason the conductor had some money for me. Now, let's get that chuck wagon into town and get some supplies, uh, if we need any. Well, it isn't that I need them, but my stomach sure does. Here's my horse, and your horses too, Wishbone. My team? Oh, where'd they come from? Well, let's quit standing around and get them watered. Get out of your horses here. How did you know we were going to need horses? Oh, a lot cheaper in Sedalia than San Antonio. More in demand down there. And here's yours, Mr. Favor. Why, yeah. There's my horse. Ah, uh, so that's how you knew, huh? That's how I knew. Well, those horses, Ed. Lucinda, she was a busy girl. Huh? Lucinda, that's a girl I know. Those are dish towels. They don't grow on trees. Hey, I've been thinking. You didn't offer to mention, but where the heck's Pete? I don't know. Well, he went to Philadelphia with you, didn't he? <laughs> Last time I saw Pete, he said he never scout for me again. Well, that's bad news. Pete's a fairly good scout. How'd he use? What are you gonna use for a scout when we start up north from San Antonio again? Pete, of course. One of these days you're going to say something like that and it isn't going to come true. Say, so you ain't casting no shadow. 
a full-grown American citizen, I cast just as big a shadow as anybody else. Sometimes a little shorter. I'm talking about Mushy. Oh, him. Well, he's up to Orangeville. We'll be passing by there tomorrow. Why Orangeville? Uh, he heard about a school teacher up there. I thought it was about time he learned to read. Yeah, that's good. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm thinking about the teacher. If he wasn't a drinking man before Mushy come along, I'll bet he is now. Hey, something's bothering those horses. You just gotta go look after him. Stop in Orangeville tomorrow? Well, I don't think so. Somebody ought to rescue that teacher from Mushy. Why? You miss Mushy? You must be out of your mind. Why would I miss that overgrown, brainless? Uh, yeah, kind of do. Just some stray. We tied him up. Yeah, he was just lost and lost. Hey, why don't you go into town? Take the stray, give him to the sheriff, pick up Mushy at the same time. All right. Yeah. That's the horse. Black, three white stockings. boss of this outfit? That'd be me. My name's Wilson, Sheriff of Orangeville. Howdy. My name's Favor. Get your horse. Why? You're coming with us. Get his gun, Chandler. Hey, hold on a minute. What's this all about? You're under arrest. Charge is horse stealing. I think I got a bill of sale for every one of those horses. Including that black horse with the three white stockings? Uh, well, no, but he's a stray. That's the only one you're accused of stealing. Mr. Favor didn't steal that horse. Look, he just wandered into our camp. The only reason we tied that horse up was bothering ours. You'll have your chance to testify. There'll be a hearing. Go ahead, Chandler. Take his gun. You let him get away with this? Well, they ain't gonna run with a man holding a gun on me. Look, you might as well all stay here until I... Then when's the hearing gonna be? Pretty quick. We don't waste too much time on horse thieves. Why don't you try taking off your badge and saying that, huh? Let's move out. You hold it till I get back. I'll hold it. Otis, ride on out to Cronin's ranch and tell him we got his horse. All right, Sheriff. I arrested my man. Will you empty your pockets, please? You're wearing your blue dress. Yes. Is that all? That's it. What do you want me to do with the car, Sheriff? Stabling in the barn with Cronin's. Look, I want that in a good, safe place. It will be. Is uh, Cronin the man who reported his horse stolen? That's right. When? Last night. And how come you came to us first thing this morning? Chandler's part Indian. He's a good tracker. Look, I'm a trail boss. My papers will show that. I just bought a herd of 48 horses. Now, why would I steal one? No idea. I pushed a herd of 3,000 head to Sedalia. I'm taking the money from the sale back to the owners in San Antonio. Now, why would I take a chance on stealing one horse? I don't know, Mr. Favor. I don't know.
Look, I'm not a judge. A horse was reported stolen. I found that horse in your possession. You'll have your chance to explain how it got there. You coming home tonight, Tom? Depends on Cronin. If he don't show up, I'll stay here overnight. Well, I've got to get back to the house. Chickens have to be fed. Go on back, then. Tom. Yes? Please be careful. I will. Town. Well, a good strong wind had blow it over. There, that jail. Yeah? Any small-sized boy could push it over without no trouble at all. Yeah, well, you're liable to have to. Let's go see how the boss is. He can take care of himself. Yeah, he might want some company, though. Well, the best place to find out anything in a town of this sort is the saloon. The best man for it's the bartender. Rowdy. Yeah? Let's stay away from girls from Glen Falls. Sure, a long time since I've seen you fellas. We ain't never been here before. Well, that explains it. <laughs> don't have much trade here in the afternoon. Well, tell the truth, don't have much trade at night either. Of course, in the morning we're closed. Well, you uh, serve whiskey, though, don't you? I'm glad you mentioned that. Are you the owner of this place? Yep, the owner, the bartender, the chief customer. You name it, I'm him. Oh, dirt it. Same thing every day, wrong key. Hey, oh, whoa, hold it. Uh, Real nice town you got here. What town? This one, Ornsville. <laughs> Used to be just a wide place in the road. It ain't even that anymore. But you got a jail, though. Yeah. Usually they don't have any more customers over there than they have in here. I guess it's uh, just a big day for both of us. Somebody in jail? Yeah, horsey. How do you know that? Oh, a town as small as this. Anybody sneezes, everybody wipes their nose. Uh, whose horse was stolen? A fellow named Cronin. He's got a small spread out about four or five miles out of town. Uh, don't go away, fellas. I'll be right back. See, sure are booming around here. Well, what did we find out? We found out things sure are booming. Yeah, well, that ain't helping Mr. Favor none. We gotta wait for that fellow Cronin. We ain't heard much about him, though. He was too quick to call for the law. Now, that horse came in there without saddle or bridle. We know it's straight. He should have known the same thing. Well, it might be a pleasure waiting for Cronin when that owner, bartender, and chief customer gets back. Cronin can't commit till the morning. All right. You want me to stay around here? No, I'll go on home and get some rest. Good night, Tom. Good night. Hey, does that mean I gotta spend the night here? My wife will bring you supper. I'm staying in town myself tonight. As soon as Cronin gets here in the morning, you get your business over with. Well, I'm sure glad Mr. Cronin can spare the time in the morning. Well, this is a lousy deal, you know? You can't do anything by hanging around here. Might as well get back to the camp. I'll leave you here? Well, it seems like a nice, safe place to be. Uh, we'll stay here and keep you company. You got eating money? No. Well, the sheriff ain't gonna feed you. Well, won't hurt us to miss a few meals. Ain't no sense to it. I'll see you all in the morning. All right. Sheriff? Witnesses around now, nothing you say would be official. You really think I'm guilty of this charge? Jim Crowan made that charge. That doesn't answer the question. I didn't mean it to. Hey, don't you ever look at a man when you're talking to him? Tom? 
try again, Clara. You look as though you'd never seen me before. I wish I never had. The name is James Cronin, ma'am. You've seen me before lots of times. You're going to keep right on seeing me. Mm. 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 Not anymore, Jim. Not ever again. The wind must be blowing from the wrong direction. I've been trying to tell you for a long time. I, I don't want to see you anymore. I know. Been known even before you did. The trouble with you is you're a good woman. You just lost your head for a while. It's your husband's fault, mostly, in being stubborn as well as stupid. We don't have to talk about Tom. Have you changed your mind? Well, I ain't changed mine. It's still you and me. No. Suit yourself. But what we plan still happens. Otherwise... I... But I can't. I just can't, Jim. You wouldn't want me to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your husband, now, would you? I never understood why anyone could kill before. Now I do. You're frightening me something terrible. Get out of my house. I'll do what you want. Sure you will. I'll drop by again. a drink. Give me that bottle. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Wilson? Sheriff Wilson. Sheriff who can't even... Put that bottle on that hitch rail. Get your horse and get out of here. Short of bothered, Sheriff. That's the job. One of these days, Tom, they're going to shoot back. You bring the food for the prisoner? Yes. And you. When are you going to give in? Realize you shouldn't be a sheriff? Take the food inside. What's all the shooting about? Nothing important. Here's your supper. Ah, it looks good. It is good. My wife's a fine cook. At least none of the prisoners ever complained. Mmm, I can see why. Get ready for coffee, yell. I can use some light. Should have left the door open.
Tom? Hmm? You're not coming home tonight? No. Oh. Where are you staying? Benny's got a spare room over the saloon. I'll stay there. Well, would you mind if I stayed with you tonight? I mean, when you're not home, I get frightened. I, I just worry about you. May I? Sheriff. Bring the prisoner in, Otis. Miller? You know what you gotta do? Sure, I know. Go on. I know, Mr. Crone. Close the door, Chandler. Leave it open. This ain't gonna take long. I run this office, Cronin. Well, for right now, you ain't got no office to run. I ain't pressing charges. What? Wait a minute, that ain't enough. I've been accused of horse stealing. There ain't no horse been stolen. You reported a stolen horse, Cronin. Miller, that's my fault, Sheriff. I kind of forgot about the busted log in the corral fence. I saw it, Sheriff. Told Miller he'd better own up to it. That's what he did. So this morning, I told Mr. Cronin the horse strayed. Wasn't stolen at all. I guess, Mr. Favor, a trail boss is used to delays of one kind or another. Sorry. Let's go, boy. Otis, get Mr. Favor's gun. Mr. Favor, too bad about what happened. This envelope was sealed last night. You just ripped that open. There was $50,000 in this envelope. If there was $50,000 in that envelope last night, there's $50,000 in there now. Well, look at it. Are you blind? Yes, Mr. Favor, I am. Yeah. You said your wife was wearing a blue dress. Her blue dress is gingham. That smells a lot different than cotton or silk. It's newspaper, Mr. Wilson. Cut up into the shape of money. Then that's what was in there last night. Philadelphia newspaper. And you were in Philadelphia. And brought the newspaper back with me. And the money. And I'm the only man that knows the combination of that safe. Well, you know what that put you. Because I'm telling you there was money in that envelope. Are you calling me a thief? I'm saying that somebody is. But maybe you lost the money or gambled it away. Maybe you think by accusing me, you can get yourself out of trouble. Did I know I was going to be arrested and have my things taken away from me so I could plan this thing? If there was money and it was stolen, then I'm the only one could have stolen it. Then you're the man that stole it. Man can get himself shot saying that about Mr. Wilson. I'm going back to our camp. I'll give you time to get the money together, but you better show up with it soon. Or we'll all be coming back into town. <laughs> Money, Jeff. You're a liar. No. We hung around long enough to find out the money's gone. I don't know anything about that. I just know I couldn't do what you asked. There was a time. Yes, there was, but not anymore. And you understand that I love my husband. So much you'd like to convince me that he stole the trail he boss's didn't. money. It ain't in that room either, Mr. Cronin. It's got to be. Planning on keeping it all for yourself? I was afraid you'd try taking it at the jail. You're not as smart as I thought. Would I have planned all this, starting with accusing the trail boss of stealing my horse if I'd wanted to grab and run? No. 
This way, it's either the sheriff or the trail boys. It's nothing to do with Jim Cronin at all. Miller, saddle up a horse for Mrs. Wilson. She's coming with us. You've got the money. Now, why don't you leave me alone? The horses are real peaceful. Thanks, Bruce. No one's riding in with the money. Yeah, I know. You know that as well as I do, but you ain't doing nothing about it. What do you do? Shoot it out with a blind man? No, but we could go in and take that town apart and get the money that way. The town ain't got it. The town's backing that sheriff. The sheriff didn't think I took the horse. I don't think he took the money. Why? Because he's blind? Because he couldn't have known I'd ever be in his jail. Well, Mr. Favor, Mr. Quint, Mr. Yates, Mr. Whisper, Mr. Scarlet. You're not in school now. You don't need to be calling the roll. Well, it's just, uh... Harkness. I just... Harkness. Well, he must be right fond of you to tell you his given name. Well, Harkness was my grandfather's name on the Mushgrove side. Uh, this is Miss Winkle. Miss Winkle? Do, ma'am. How do you do? Uh, she, she's my school teacher. I'm very pleased to meet you. You're Mr. Favor, aren't you? Harkness told me a lot about you. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. And you're Mr. Wishbone, of course. That's who I am. Harkness told me a lot about you, too. I am not. Oh, I'm sure it is. Harkness told me you were the finest trail cook in the world. Oh, well, he's kind of the finest cook's loss. I don't think that's very nice. Oh, well, there's a difference between a plain, ordinary louse and a cook's louse. Harkness told me how proud he is to be your assistant. Yeah, that's what he is, my assistant. Uh, Miss Winkle and me was out picnicking. Miss Winkle and I, Harkness. Uh, uh, Harkness and I was, I mean, well, anyway, Mr. Favor, we just heard what happened in town. And I told Miss Winkle right away that you wouldn't be doing nothing but telling it to. Thanks, Mush uh, Mr. Mushgrove. And uh, Miss Winkle said right away that Mr. Wilson wouldn't be lying either. Well, that doesn't help very much. I said Mr. Wilson. I didn't mention any other name. And who else might you have mentioned? If I were a gossip, Mrs. Wilson. I don't care much for gossip, Miss Winkle. Oh, neither do I. Of course, there are times. And this is one of those times. Mrs. Wilson almost left Mr. Wilson two or three times after he was blinded. But she didn't. If I were a gossip. Of course you're not, Miss Winkle. Orangeville such a small town. Anyone could tell you. Tell me what? The name of the reason why Mrs. Wilson didn't go. Well, I'd appreciate your telling me. James Cronin. Yeah, Cronin would be the one who planned the whole thing. You're sure about this? Sure, I'm sure. And the only one in town who doesn't know about it is Mr. Wilson himself. Quint, settle me a horse. I'm going with you. No, you don't need any help breaking up a man's life. Thanks, Mr. Wisco. Thanks. Steps in town. Look, Sheriff. I, I have to tell you something. I don't know where to begin. It's about my wife. Go ahead. Yeah. It's not that easy, though. Maybe I can make it easier for you. You're a stranger in town. But you found out in one day what it's taken me months to find out. 
Except underneath. I really knew it all the time. After losing my sight, I spent a year learning. Learning how to see with my ears, and my hands, and my nose. And then I thought I, I really wasn't blind. But I was wrong. Even if I got my eyes back, I'd have still been blind. There's one thing I didn't know. That she was a thief, too. You better come with me. and she ran. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. The place has been searched, turned upside down. She would have known where the money was. Mr. Favor, there's one thing I need from you. I know the road between here and town, but I don't know the road between here and Cronin's ranch. Let's go. me to come with you. It's not going to do you any good. I didn't want to leave this part of the country. I like it here. Mr. Cronin, out there. Take her the blind, tie her up, and keep her quiet. Let go of me! Stop it! Evening, Sheriff. Mr. Favor. Where's my wife? You ought to know better than me. I know as well as you. But well, neither one of us knows a thing. We're searching your place. I don't think so. No light in the house. There's one in the barn, though. A couple of Cronin's men are just coming out of the barn. Then that's where we start. You ain't starting nowhere, Sheriff. You're finished. If you've got nothing to hide in that barn. It's my barn. You're right! She in that barn? Yeah. Cronin, now this will make us even. So you can say as much about what happened as you like, or as little. We got our money back. There's nothing more to be said. 
I have no way to repay you. The only thing I can do is tell you that I'm, I'm resigning as sheriff because it's better for the town, I guess, and because my wife wants it that way. Horses are ready to go, boss. Shh. Everything's not quite ready. Well, goodbye until next year. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? In front, in front of everybody? Marcy! Marcy! Goodbye, Harkness. You were a good student. Uh, goodbye. Uh, thanks for her books. Uh, you're a real great teacher. 